Oh, that's ratchet. What's going on, y'all? We are back for another review of Black King Crew Chicago. This is season, what season is this? Season five, episode 15, the cover up is worse than the crime. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And hit the notification button so you will be up to date whenever I upload new content. Let me tell y'all, I'm sorry. I'm being so ratchet. I'm all up in these now and later. So let me tell y'all, do y'all ever have a candy or a food that just take you back? You just start having memories of old shit. Now and later is a damn candy that takes me back. This reminds me <laughs> of being back in Highland Mall, back um, circa 90s, <laughs> when we was all young boppers at the little candy shop that they had in Highland Mall, y'all. This mall we used to have in Austin, that mall used to be the lick. Highland Mall, baby. Even more so back in the day when they had the gold mine, when I was a youngster, when I used to try to follow the big dogs and shit around, y'all. Now, ladies, they do it for me every time. Ooh. It's a week after the Miami trip, and Charmaine is back at WGCI. Question. I thought Charmaine left in the last episode. I thought she did her ex then. Why is she here, Ike? Why is she here? She's reflecting on her time that she had at Nine Mag. Yada, yada, yada. We all know how... It, shit just was too much for her. She couldn't take it anymore. She's reflecting on her interview that she had with Nipsey Hussle not too long before he passed away. And uh, I actually seen that video. It was a dope ass video. I mean, not a video, an interview that she did with him. And then um, she's also reflecting on the fact that she feels like the team chose Lily over her, which really they did because back, um, back over at Hood Mag, Later on, um, it's Don, Van, um, Bell is there, and Lily ends up coming in. They welcome Lily with open arms. They tell her that they're happy to have her back. They're glad that she's back. And she says she's ready to get to work. She says she noticed, or she does know that she's been hired and fired from NIMAC 50 million, 11 hundred times. Yes, bitch, because you keep getting into it with people. You keep fighting people. That's what happened. You're going to get hired. You're going to get fired. But she says that she knows that she is about 50 percent which really no lily you about 90 percent of the reason why your ass keep getting hired and fired from the fucking jobs that she keeps leaving there and coming back from there right but really the team did choose lily over charmaine because y'all keep it 100 what charmaine got to offer anyway she don't peer she don't tattoo hell she loud as hell when she greet people at the door you ain't gotta be that damn loud when people come through the door like come on now charmaine it was cute though y'all Bella had her little girl there. I think her name was Leah. And then Don had his two boys there, um, Ash Dunn and um, DJ, Don Jr. Y'all, that baby boy name is Ash Don. Ashley and Don, Ash Don. If that ain't some black shit right there, y'all, we always got to do some chopped and screwed shit to our baby's names. Hence my name, Monique. But it ain't spelled M-O-N-I-Q-U-E. No, M-O-N-I-C-K. Why? Because my daddy wanted to be different. Shout out to you, Daddy. Everybody calls me Monique. <sighs> Bitch, I was parched. Damn. Van is also talking about the fact that his daughter's 17th birthday is coming up. Now, he was saying growing up in the hood or whatever, Chicago. Oh, I'm showing titties. I'm just giving titties. Speaking of titties, going back to which, Charmaine on the radio still got her titties out. Like, how you on the radio, not even in front of the camera, and your titties is the only thing that niggas see through the radio? Like, this bitch sun's out, guns out. She keep them guns ablazing, baby. I mean, damn, Charmaine. I ain't mad at you, girl, but golly. One big titty bitch to the next, girl. Everybody don't want to see them titties all the time. Put them up. Put them fun bags up, girl. Back at New Nine Mag, um, Ryan ends up getting a subpoena 
for a lawsuit for a tattoo that Van did on a client. She said that the tattoo that she did was fucked up and ugly, and the pictures that they showed the shit looked fucked up and ugly. It was supposed to be a tat um, of, of Africa, some kind of cover-up or something. He's instantly pissed off because they are coming after Nine Mag. And, of course, you know Nine Mag is Ryan's baby. So when they come for Nine Mag, they coming for him. Although it is uh, um, a complaint against Van, it's a complaint against the brand of Nine Mag, and Ryan has to carry the grunt of that. He instantly gets pissed off. I don't blame him. Fucking up the church's money. What fuck wrong with you? Don and Ashley go house hunting, y'all. It's so cute. Now, Don says that he, they, they not rolling in dough, but they making a nice little bit of money to where he gave her the green light to go out and look at some new houses, right? So she goes and finds this house that's four blocks away from the Obamas. Now, girl, girl. I knew from the jump when the motherfucker pulled up to the house before they even went inside. Y'all wasn't finna be able to afford that goddamn house. It was five bedrooms, three and a half baths. The house was laid. The house was fire. Had two stoves in the kitchen. Two stoves. What you need two stoves for? You only got four people in the family. They had um, the tub. Whoo, the tub was sexy, y'all. That's a sexy-ass tub. Like, that's the kind of tub every time I get in there, I have to drink some wine, and my nails and my toes got to be done just because it's a sexy-ass tub. Like, you can't get up in there looking ratchet. That's a sexy-ass fucking tub. It was real nice. But, um, so when it came down to what the price of the house was, that motherfucker was $869,000. They like, what? Say what? Come, come again? Say that again? Girl, bye. Y'all know good and goddamn well. Bitch, y'all knew y'all was not fin to be able to get that goddamn house. And later on, Don meets up with the leasing agent, which they run this nigga credit. They, they run his money. Nigga, you ain't gonna get up in there, nigga. You got a champagne taste on a beer budget, my nigga. It ain't finna happen, okay? Y'all, this part was funny. So, Van and Jen, they back at Van's. They back together, of course. You know she's gonna get out. I like Van and Jen together. I'm sorry. I like Van and Jen together. They so cute. I like them. So, she's hungry. She's telling this nigga, look, you're gonna have to cook me some real ass goddamn food. Van talking about, now, nah, since I done, you know, me and her done got back together, I done changed up my ways. I done changed up my lifestyle since y'all calling me a fat ass. She telling this nigga, I don't want no more shakes. I don't want no more salads. Van, let me tell you. You ain't got to lose that weight. Listen, I, I I like big men. That's just me, though. My husband is a big man. I like big dudes. That's just me. I'm a chubby chaser all day. <laughs> but, Van, don't lose no weight for her. You do you, bruh. You keep your belly, nigga. So, he's talking about, um, you know, he got a surprise for his daughter. He bought her a slightly used Lamborghini for her 17th birthday. My nigga. That's dope. Let me tell you the car that I got when I turned, uh, yeah, when I turned 17. I got a, what kind, a 92 Ford Escort hatchback, two-door, ruby red. Me and my best friend Trina kept that bitch whipping like a motherfucker. Let me tell you, I was the first one out of all of my people in high school to have a damn car. Me and my homegirl Sharon and Melody, we used to ride out on that goddamn bill. Whoo! That was my guy, Ruby Red. I miss you, bitch. I miss you. So he's trying to think of a way to surprise his daughter with the keys to her car, right? Somehow or another, they end up going in a shoebox. He ends up finding some cigarillos in her shoebox. I knew a Mm-hmm. White owl. White grape, white owl. Don't ask me how I know that. Ain't none of your business how I know that. But anyways, he was going to hide the keys in the shoebox, right? So... He finds the damn cigarillos in there. He like, oh, this 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 little bitch smoking weed up in my house, nigga, for real? So he waits for Brianna to come home. That's his daughter's name. He waits for Brianna to come home. He confronts her about it. Like any average normal teenager, of course, she's going to lie and say, oh, they ain't mine. I'm holding it for somebody else. Duh, that's what you say. <laughs> normal typical teenager hello but she eventually does tell him the truth and like he says i'm the parent you don't do what i do you do what i say he said i can't i'm will be the last one to tell her about smoking weed because like he said he smoked weeds he smokes weed himself but he's a parent he can do what the fuck you want to do you the child you're supposed to do what the hell he say so this nice new no um newly slightly used lamborghini that he got her she unfortunately is not going to be able to rock that bitch and I feel bad for you, Brianna. I bet you that was bad, too. But, oh, well. 
That's doing you fucked up. And you know what? I appreciate Van in that moment because Van even said I would be a fucked up father if I was to still give her the keys to this car after I just basically caught my daughter. Not caught her in the act of smoking. She did admit to me that she's smoking marijuana. Which, I don't blame you, Van. She don't need that goddamn car because all she finna do now is go sneak off in the car and smoke weed. Mm -mm, don't do that. So back at the new NIMAD, Ryan, um is Ryan still ain't told goddamn Van about this lawsuit. He said he has to meet with his lawyers first, which I get it. He want to make sure all his ducks in a row, make sure he got everything going on the right track before he brings this up to Van, you know. But um, he's, like I said, he still ain't told him about it, but he's got this new guest artist that he said is coming in to help out in the shop for a little while. He's hyping it up like it's somebody big. Y'all, it's Shine, that, that, that white black boy, that, that black white boy that was on there from the last time. He was only on there for like an episode, an episode and a half, and then when they got into that big old fight in Vegas on the last season, he left from there. So, it was him. Yay! And child, I left that part out. He only excited to get back to gone, and, and he trying to mess with Lily. That's the only reason why he happy to get back. <laughs> So back at the shop, yo, at this at the new nine mag, right? So Ryan had apparently told Sean last time he seen him that when he was back in town that Sean was gonna give him a tattoo. Ryan, I don't blame you. Ryan was like, I don't mind getting a tattoo from him. I respect his work, but uh, that shit hurt. I got how many? I got seven tattoos myself, and all them shits hurt. All of them hurt. I don't give a damn what nobody say. Tattoos hurt. I got seven tattoos, and as of right now, only two piercings. My piercings really didn't hurt, but the goddamn tattoos hurt. That shit hurt. So, Ryan didn't want to get the tattoo, but um, what's the old girl named Gina? She volunteers to get tattooed because she got skin, right? Now, is it just me? I'm finna give me another goddamn nine let. I ain't finna lie. So, is it just me? Um, but Gina was flirting with 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 shine she was feeling him you could tell the way she was like oh i got skin like i, I let you do what you want to do to me like you can do whatever kind you i let you have free range she feeling shine but girl shine ain't feeling you child he want lily old spongebob shape out girl all right but you know what i like shine i like his work let me take that back i like his work but Sean, as a person, I don't like him. He's too goddamn cocky. He's too fucking conceited. I really don't like him. Maybe if he come in and he shut his mouth and he just do a tattoo, he'd be all right with me. But when he gets to talking, mm -mm. Throw him away, throw him away. Back at Hood Mag, Don, Van, Lily, and Bella, they all sitting around talking. Bella telling them about how she felt like Jet done ghosted her ass. Yeah, yeah, Jet done ghosted your ass. Girl, you done gave him some puss. That's all he wanted from you. He done moved on from you. So um, they all sitting around talking, laughing about that or whatever. And then in comes Shine. Shine trying to come over there to see Lily. He walks in, immediately starts throwing shade at Van. Oh, I see you with your glasses. Uh-huh, Van. Yeah, nigga, I see you with your glasses too. But fuck, come walk your ass up in here. Fuck. Van and Shine start shooting shots back and forth with each other. Don kind of get in for for a minute. And so Van finally telling him, my nigga, what you even come over here for? You came over here for Lily in the first place, right? Okay, well, go on, get your... He didn't say your bitch, but that's what he was thinking. Go get your bitch, get the fuck on up out of here. He, Y'all, he just came over there to be messy and to throw some shit up in their face like, hey, I'm back when we all know the reason why he left again because of the fight in Vegas. So he just basically came over there to throw, th throw it in their face that Ron has invited me to come back. I'm here as a guest spot and I'm gonna fuck Lily. Toodles. So y'all, Ron and his man bun finally meet up with Van and he tells Van about the lawsuit that he has against him um, from the girl who's saying that he did that fucked up tattoo on her, right? And he knows exactly who the girl is. He said that it was supposed to be a cover up. He also said that there's parts of the tattoo that she's leaving out that's not pictured because what it looks like is all you can see is just this big black blotch that's on the bottom of her thigh he says at the top that it's all the african colors there's a rainbow a, a giraffe probably simba mufasa in the back and rafiki and all this shit but all she's showing is um the bottom where that little blackout part is and it does look real 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 fucked up down there the shit don't look right then as he's telling Van about that that um, tattoo, he also tells Van that there's another guy that has a complaint against him saying that a tattoo that he did on him um, in August ended up getting infected. Now, it was a portrait of his brother. His brother had passed away. 
And so this guy had got the portrait of his brother on his arm. At that time, when he did it, he said he loved it. But he said, I think he said that the tattoo was like on the 7th. And by the 14th, he was actually in the emergency room. I don't know if he stayed in the hospital or what, but he was on antibiotics from um, an infection from the tattoo. And he's saying that the reason why it took him so long to come back to him and say something about the tattoo is because he was grieving his brother's death, that it took a, it took a hard mental toll on him. He emotionally wasn't right and so he couldn't he said himself that if van would have said something the wrong the slightest thing to him that the whole conversation would have went left and that everything would have went out the door which is his call for saying had i came in here in the mental state that i was in i'd have fucked you up i'd have fucked your shop up and i'd have fucked anybody else within the vicinity of the block up so i had to get my mental together so i wouldn't come in here and put my grievances off on you and so van does apologize deeply for it because the guy told him he said look here i don't want you to think that i'm on some kind of bullshit because i'll sue a motherfucker that's what i'll do but i ain't gonna sue my fellow brother which he, that kind of threw me for a loop when he said that i was like nigga what you trying to say but like he let him know he's like i got a lawsuit going right now i ain't afraid to sue nobody i ain't just one of these niggas that throw it out there and say that they ain't gonna do it i'll do the shit but I ain't gonna do it to you. So they rectify the situation because the guy says he wants another tattoo. He doesn't feel comfortable getting a tattoo by you, Van, but he does want to get a tattoo from the boss man. So Ron does agree to that. He takes him and tells him, I'll get you with my assistant. We'll get all your info. We'll get something drawn up, yada, yada, yada. I don't know if he did a tattoo then or he's supposed to do a tattoo later, but he's supposed to hook it up for later, okay? Van and Don, um, not Van and Don, Van and Ryan and Ryan's man bun. They make up from there. This episode was cute, y'all. I liked it. It was very entertaining. I am here for it. Next week, it looked like it's going to be good as hell, too. It's, it's going to be a, a tattoo convention, looks like, in Chicago. And bitch, everybody going to be there. Junior going to be there. Lily going to be there. Reese is going to be there. The one that lied about Junior knocking her in the face. That bitch, Reese. I don't like her ass. Um, the other one gonna be the what's the 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 heavy set kind of crazy one? Huh? Okay, cat cobra, cat. Some kind of animal. She gonna be there. Everybody gonna be there. We all gonna be there, and I will be here to give you the review. <laughs> if you like this review, let me know what you think. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And I will see y'all in the next one. Peace out. I'm gonna eat me some more now, later. <laughs> what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i holla <laughs>